Hey, how's it going? My name is Jackie Fish and welcome back to a brand new campaign on Total War Free Kingdom. So the embargo has now dropped and I can go ahead and show you guys basically anything I want in the game. So I'll be streaming the game an absolute ton on the channel as well as bringing you guys these cool edited Let's Plays which will basically be like a normal campaign but I'll be editing down the episodes so that they don't go on forever um, and we should be done with this campaign within about 10 episodes which I think will just make it so that you guys don't get bored and we also get to see a ton of action throughout the campaign and see basically a full-on campaign. So if you guys are also looking to pre-order Total War Free Kingdoms and you live in Europe, be sure to check out my link down below in the description. You get 16% off. They work directly with publishers and it's a really good way to help support the channel. Okay, so let's take a look at who I am going to be playing in this first campaign. I'm going to be diving in as Yuan Shu because I feel like Yuan Shao gets a ton of love, but his brother doesn't really get played much. And I think he's in a very, very interesting position. As well as that, he kind of has a very unique play style because of his positioning. You're not really going to be forming coalitions against the Han and, and Dong Zhao. You're going to kind of be forming up with them and using him to kind of push your claim on the Yuan family throne. So yeah, Yuan Shao is the legitimized bastard of obviously my father. He's my kind of legitimized brother and he currently holds the claim because he was legitimized before I was born or I say I, Yuan Shu was born. Uh, we're already getting in character. Yeah, so he was legitimized before Yuan Shu was born um, and then obviously Yuan Shu came along and you know, I I have, I have a better claim, even though he is a legitimized bastard, I kind of feel like Yuan Shu should be on the Yuan kind of throne as it were, even though it's not a throne, but you know what I mean, ahead of the house. So we're going to be using everything we can at our disposal to try and make that happen, and if we have to go ahead and join the bad guys, then we'll have to go ahead and join the bad guys. One of our faction specific uh, specializations is legitimacy, we get more prestige, which allows us to rank up a lot faster, we can also form coalitions right away which is basically I think that's exactly what Yuan Shu and Yuan Shao can both do um, and we basically just need to get this up and hopefully depose our brother and there'll be a ton of really cool events. We get access to rapid tiger infantry which are great kind of uh, light infantry units that can quickly outflank your opponents and we also have warriors of the left as well which again are kind of basically the same as well so they're pretty decent and um, hopefully we have to use them effectively or get our our hands on them. We also get an administration building which gives us more money at the cost of legitimacy and then finally we get a economic assignment which gives us more income from commerce. All right, our final kind of traits are that we get more money from industry and commerce and we also get plus 15 undercover network cost for enemy spies. So basically if people want to infiltrate and do stuff to you on Shu, it's going to cost them more and make, make it basically more likely that they're going to get caught. So he's pretty powerful when it comes to preventing spies from affecting you. So yeah, let's just dive into this. We're going to be playing on romance, of course, and let's see what we can get done. Embers rise, stark against the night. The tyrant Dong Zhuo wields the flames of destruction. Luo Yang burns. Chaos ignites as the power of the eunuchs is crushed. In the pyre, the hand falters. There is little to gain in staying to watch cities burn. Yuran Shu has his own agenda. He will see it realized. Though cities burn, he will be known. China is in turmoil. The great empire of the Han, stretching back ages beyond counting, is being devoured by corruption. The yellow turbans, thousands strong, began raising their banners in rebellion and seizing commanderies across the realm. In the fires rise to claim Luoyang. Dong Zhuo burns the capital. With the emperor in his possession, he effectively rules the empire from his new capital in Chang'an. And elsewhere, rebellions still plague the land. Dong Zhe Changjue, Dan Huang Jin Zhihai, Bu Huang Duo Rang, Bi Xu Jiao Chu Dai Jin. 
If I may, your kin, Yoran Shao, may be able to. <laughs> 与他何干？他麾下的联军不堪一击，根本不值一提。我这兄弟色厉胆薄，连贼后郑江都比他强势。An unlikely friend, my lord, but an option nonetheless. An imperial destiny awaits you, my lord. If you cannot defend the throne, seize it. Okay, so let's kick this campaign off. We have some missions right off the bat. And as you can see, we are surrounded by unfriendly people. It's not going to look great for us if we don't consolidate our power quickly. Luckily, there are some Han Empire provinces, you know, kind of scattered around, which we're going to obviously look to take advantage of. There is also a Jade Mine in our home settlement, which is amazing. This will give us so much money in the early game. And we're actually already making a ton of cash. Wow, two grand already. I guess it's because I've mainly been playing as uh, Leo Bay right now uh, against my in my head-to-head -head against Lionheart. So the fact that, you know, I now have a weaker army to start with, it just gives you so much more money. It's kind of crazy. I'm sure a lot of the other factions are probably pretty similar. Um, what do we want? The replenishment of the money. I think just for money in the early game, because units will replenish eventually anyway. And we'll probably just move on to take the settlement. Yeah, if we take the settlement, we get public order, which is good. So let's move on. It's actually it's a Pyrrhic victory. We'll take it. Again, we'll just delegate these battles because they're really small. And we want to get to something a bit more meatier this episode. But I think I have a good plan of what we want to do in the campaign. Again, support from the people. He gets a bit more experience as well. And then they want me to upgrade the town. We can do that. Uh, I might just do that immediately. Even though we already have this building. So one of the things, obviously, with our faction is we get more money through industry. So we're going to want to try and boost up commerce and industry as much as possible. You can already see we have a mail post here, which is giving me some good commerce. Um, unfortunately, I can't build the marketplace yet because I need a level 4 city. So I guess for now, we're probably going to stick with a state workshop, yeah? The state workshop gives us an extra 100 gold. Um, we'll probably, yeah, but why not? We'll just, uh, actually, do we want that? Do we, would we rather have some food? Cause we're actually lacking food a little bit. But it's literally only one food, so is that worth it? But it also gives us growth, so yeah, let's grab up that. Why not? The growth is pretty nice. And then we'll recruit, we can't actually recruit anyone this time, which is, I guess, fine. Yeah, um, we're getting some accolades as well. Oh, some nice accolades. So let's go and give that out to our army as well. It's, it's literally only me and another guy, but... No mounts, but a handful of followers. Income from industry. That would be a good one to have. Ooh, a plus 15 undercover network cost. So is this additional on top of my bonus? Because, wow, yeah, it's going to be really hard for spies to, to hurt me. And then we just have a yeah, stone axe, which we can give over to this guy. So let's grab him, the guard, because it boosts up his satisfaction. And then we also will just give him this as well. Help boost his stats up a little bit, which is not bad. Um, we could also get this character the legendary if we just boosted this up to full. Would not be a bad plan whatsoever. Ah, so you could pick like a heavier, lighter version, but like these take away stats, whereas this gives stats. That's really interesting. You can pick like what do you, what would you rather? That's cool. I, I like that that you have the options to do that. But for now, we will just kind of chill out. Uh, diplomacy. Let's take a look at the dipl diplomacy really quickly. So we have He Yi and the Yellow Turban stand to ourselves. We have the Han Empire and the Dong as well, because Chan'an is literally just to the north of us here. Um, no, Chan'an is over here, right? Yeah, that's the new capital. Whereas Li Liang, sorry, Liang Yang, I'm sorry, butchered that. I I'm getting the hang of the names, but like every so often my brain just melts because I'm a Papega and I, I just I just can't pronounce it. But please bear with me. I am trying my best to, to get better and better. So I wonder if we could reoccupy this city. That could be a good plan. Just to take our army back north, take this lumber camp, and then take the the Imperial City. That could be really good, especially for our legitimacy. Um, do we have we do have a trade agreement as well? Does anyone want to trade? Oh, Sunjin likes us as well. Um, do you wanna Oh yeah, could we can form coalitions and military We could form a coalition right off the bat with him. Surely that can't be a good idea, right? This can't, this can't be smart now. We're not going to do this because I feel like I'll see what happens with them. Because sometimes I think Liu Bei, no Liu Bei, uh, Liu Biao uh, comes out on top. Liu Biao, 
comes out on top and then sometimes he comes out on top. So we'll have to see what happens with them events uh, with the Imperial Seal. Would he support my legitimacy? Almost would support my legitimacy. Which is obviously what we want. And that's, uh, I mean, that's actually amazing. Wow. As Emperor as well. Wow. Oh my God. Make this work. What do you want? Just 200 gold? Sure. I mean, that seems really good. Now, he would support me to become Emperor. I'm not sure if that's just going to be useless now. You can see, I think we've gained a little bit of legitimacy now, uh, which is great. Okay, cool. That's fine for now. I don't think anyone would want to trade with me anyway. So, we'll just see what the, the next turn brings. Oh, quickly something to note as well. So, we can actually see his army now because he's supporting me. You can see he starts off behind enemy lines. Um, obviously, with the Imperial Seal, trying to run back south as quickly as physically That's possible. Good. So, we'll see what the Tiger does. Uh, but for now, we're just going to be building up our army. Uh, oh, yeah, we also have an assignment to do. I probably should have done that um, a while back. Yeah, our legitimacy just jumped up pretty heavily. That's awesome. Um, so, let's see what we can do. Income from Commerce, Silk, and Spice. That's actually not a bad boost to our commerce, but we don't really have a lot. I think the Jade Mine is mm, commerce and industry. Actually, maybe we'll do that then. Or we'll just take this big hit of corruption to boost our happiness. That could also be pretty good. Hmm, what would I rather? Her being more satisfied? Um, yeah, sure, let's just boost her satisfaction for a bit. And yeah, it's probably going to be good nonetheless. Um, and she'll send there. And then we'll also recruit some more units as well. So nice, we do actually get access to these good swordsmen as well. Let's grab up some crappy ones right off the bat. And then some good swordsmen. That's not bad. I want to let my money boost up as much as possible for the foreseeable future. But yeah, that's a good retinue right there. Especially once these guys come back. Then we'll probably change over these archers to being cavalry. And then head north to take this Han Empire. I would also love to take this farmland as well from Cao Cao. Because we could even sell it back to him as well if we wanted to. Through the diplomacy, we could trade it back to him for lots of money. Maybe a coalition. Maybe that's actually the better plan. Yeah, maybe that is the better plan. To try and um, to try and take that farmland and then sell it back so we could form a, an early coalition with Sal Sal and, and Sun Jin. That would be insanely powerful. Oh my god. Okay, time for our first reform. And there's a few things we could do. But I think I'm just going to, again, dive towards this 10% income from all sources. Uh, it seems too good not to grab up. And I mean, in the early game, you could probably ignore it. Because we, we are literally only making uh, 500 gold from taxation. Um, so that doesn't really help us. And I think the family estate is something completely separate. You can't add modifiers to that. But even still, like, the extra the extra bonus to it is just going to always be useful. And I guess the sooner we get it, the more it pays for itself. Uh, I'm currently recruiting a huge army. The Han Empire is going back into my capital. Um, so I'll probably force March back there. But I wanted to get as much of this mustering bonus as I could. Because it's really good. It gives you an extra 10% boost to your replenishment whilst you're mustering. So uh, it's actually 12%. Wow. Yeah, it's actually 12%, so it's just a really good thing to kind of stick still, and obviously as soon as you move, it then gets rid of it, which really sucks, but hey, it is what it is. Uh, legitimacy is growing as well. Does it tell me why it's growing? Uh, diplomacy, because uh, Sun Jin supports us, that's great. And all the yellow turbans have taken this. Why is Sao Sao not taking it? Yeah, I wonder what Sao Sao's up to. So unfortunately, we're going to have to head back. Uh, we also leveled up. We'll take the replenishment uh, bonus. It gives uh, a big boost, 5%. Again, like, replenishment is key in the early game. If you can keep your army rapidly moving, that's all that matters. Unfortunately, we're going to have to give up our replenishment this turn to, to take the city. Uh, you know, to defend the city. I can't lose my capital, right? But then next turn, we'll take a turn to replenish. And then we'll probably head off after this farmland. Because I would love to sell that. Oh, I mean, the Lumber Yard in the north would also... Yeah, but, oh, my wow. Don Zhao just took that in the north as well. And he, hopefully he goes off and fights him. That would be great for me, honestly. If they fight each other, and then maybe we could mop up. I wonder if uh, Don Zhao actually wants to make peace with me. So we're... Oh, that's nice that it takes you off a force march. Uh, that's kind of useful. Um, we could ask for more food, but I think my food is fine. A clay ox isn't that important either. Let's take a look at diplomacy really quickly. Because would Dong Zhao want to make peace? No, he really, really wouldn't. And there's no one else we can trade with, right? He, Yi, Lu Biao is trading with the Han. Okay. The Yellow Turban Rebellion. We could, it's just a kind of like in general. And you can't trade with um, the other actually individual lords. So there's no one I can really trade with because we have no access with between us here. So 
yeah, right now our trade is kind of sitting off and we're just wasting it. But we just need to take some land. And I think, really, we're just waiting for this army to replenish. I mean, as soon as the army replenishes, we can move out. I might move... Oh, okay, so he's running away now. Annoyingly through my territory. So, I'm not really sure what to do. Obviously, it's winter, so ideally we don't want to move. But I'm kind of tempted to move north and just to hit this lumberyard. Because I imagine they're still replenishing. I also really want to hit the yellow turbans as well, but I just feel like we will not be safe until we've either made peace with Dong um, or we've, uh, you know, taken this territory. So let's move up, see what's there. Um, an army. I mean, we can fight that army. Let's move in and we'll kick off our first battle. It's a pretty good army, um, but if we can beat these guys, there's probably a few of them we can take to our, our kind of uh, control. Or we could just starve him out for a turn. Actually, screw it. Let's starve him out and see if he'll come out. Because I'd much rather fight him on the open field. And we have a turn or two of supplies still. So let's starve him out. Stop his, like, make him attrition. And yeah, that's good with me, actually. Let's do that and see what he does. He'll probably sally out. No, he doesn't sally out. So he just takes more attrition. Maybe there's another army on the way. Who knows? But yeah, we'll probably fight him in, like, a turn's time, I think. Okay, nice. Another reform we've just picked up. And I think I'm going to grab up this 10% income from all sources. Because uh, it's just always going to be useful, right? And the sooner we get it, the better. Not that it really helps us massively, like, right away. But it will help us the further we go on. So let's go ahead and initiate this battle. They've obviously taken a bunch more casualties. It's now a close victory. So let's just dive into this one and have our first battle. We obviously outnumber them two to one. But if we can capture some people, that'll be amazing. Um, and then I really, really want to go over and try and take the Yellow Turban territory to the uh, east of us because I want to sell that to Sal Sal and form a coalition with him and Son Jin. Uh, just a really early coalition that we can just absolutely annihilate everyone with. Okay, so we have formed up. Let's get this bad boy started. So we're going to push forward our archers. Um, I think the quicker we move into this territory, the better. This is a lumber camp custom settlement, I think. Unfortunately, we don't have access to fire arrows yet. It'd be really useful to burning down this territory. Uh, but we're just going to move in. Also, you can notice as well with the fog of war, uh, or everything in grey is stuff I can't see. So obviously we can't see their army yet. We're going to have to obviously take advantage of that at some point. Um, but hopefully it means their arrows can't hit me either. So I might move forward my archer uh, detachment. I've got swords behind. I've also got some decent swordsmen as well. These guys are a bit more heavily armoured, a bit more well trained. So the sword guard will do a decent job and then we have halberds backing it up. Yon Shu is right here as well. Yon Shu, yeah. Looking pretty cool with his missile block chance. So I want him up in the front line so we can boost that up. So I think we're ready for the assault. And we're just going to attack all three of these positions and try and break our way forward. Um, so let's again advance forward the, uh, the army. As soon as we get close to being in range, their towers will start to cause issues. But I don't think they can see me because of the way the map's set up, which is really interesting. Okay, my archers are opening up on their defenses. Going to try and soften this up as much as I can. I mean, they don't really have much in the way of defenses anyway because these guys are so depleted. So my archers are just going to be piling in. I mean, look at that archer fire right now. It is actually disgusting. I mean, I've got infantry going to basically every single breach just to push their way through. Um, so let's do that. Let's also throw in my main general as well. I mean, ideally, the quicker we take... These positions are better. Oh, that's actually really... I think the AI is actually doing something really smart here. I think they're throwing out these generals to try and uh, stop me from taking the towers. Which is actually pretty smart, if that is the case. And then our axe infantry and everyone else will break through this side. And then we have you guys coming in there as well. Uh, surprisingly, they have a lot of men kind of just stationed back. Um, yeah, back. Let's go and take these archers, bring them over here to help out in this fight. And you guys come over and help out in this fight. Yeah, it seems like the best plan. Okay, let's try and push our archers and our cavalry up a little bit more. The archers are, you know, supporting our infantry elsewhere. But these towers are causing me some serious issues. No, no, one of my generals actually just broke. That is really not good. We have managed to get some cavalry into their, their base, which I'm going to try and use to my advantage. Smashing down this infantry and probably moving on to the archers elsewhere. And we are obviously going to be taking down their general as well, which is great. Yeah, if we can kill this general, that would be perfect. And the archers just continue to focus down the rest of their miss. Actually, focus down this. We brought up more men, but we need to break through uh, a little bit more aggressively. And you've got these archers here as well helping out. Our axemen are struggling as well. Yeah, these defensive positions are so difficult to claim. No matter what you bring up, you know, a good halberd unit will hold the line for a serious amount of time. Okay, the towers have been taken, so we can actually move up our infantry a little bit more. But we still have to be very careful. We are taking heavy casualties in this battle. We are making good progress everywhere else now. Um, but yeah, as you can see, we are starting to lose a lot of infantry. Like, I think 
the auto resolve would have been a bit more friendly to me. But it's fine. We can continue to move up. We've taken these towers, which is what I really wanted to do. Also, this hero needs to be very careful. Um, let's say, yeah, we, all our heroes need to be very careful. They are very low. Don't really know what they're getting shot by, actually. I guess just missile fire. Or whatever it is, we need to just, yeah, keep them alive. And nice, we've actually broken this as well. It's so good. The tower, yeah, all the main towers have been taken now. Which is huge. Um, can we get any cavalry up here? I'd love to get cavalry back there. Because they really don't have anything left. And we have some cavalry left. And some missiles left as well. But missiles are going to have to go into combat soon. Honestly. Okay, thank god we won. But I took some absolutely insane... Like, I took so much damage trying to push through these choke points. Maybe taking, like, four choke points would have been a smarter decision. Um, yeah, these, these kind of positions are really difficult to take. You definitely need trebuchets to uh, to further, uh, especially in the early game. I think as you get to the mid to late game, the defenses aren't too bad. But like in the early game, you need trebuchets to, to soften up the defenders because, yeah, they can really, really hold. Hopefully we've captured some people as well. That would be perfect if we've captured uh, a couple of them because they'll probably ransom for quite a lot. If not, uh, we can just kill them. Uh, we, we killed We killed all three of them. Wow. I imagine this guy is probably a pretty important guy as well. And our legitimacy is almost at the first level, which will give us 50 uh, prestige, which is almost on the way to second marquee as well. Great. I will take that. Um, if we can get someone else to support us. Oh, is she here second marquee? Oh, we did hit it. Oh, nice. So we are actually second marquee now. Perfect. That is awesome. So we can do spies now. If I'm No, we can't do spies yet. I thought we could vote a second marquee. Oh no, we're not second. We're, we're noble. Sorry, now we're we're working towards second marquee. Okay, that makes sense. Sorry, me being a bit stupid there. Um, but I'll take it. Um, this will be a great lumber camp to take as well because we can see, it kind of give us our capital warning if anything bad is on the way. And obviously a little bit more money and prestige is also nothing to sniff at. So I think what we might do now is we might head north and take all of these because they did say about allying with a bandit queen so that could be also be a, a, a valuable idea to try that i might have to get another army fairly soon though because um and unless the dong wants peace now i'd be more than happy to peace out with the dong and then we can focus on taking out the yellow turban okay guys so we now have our first dilemma we have to decide do we support sunjin or do we move on and let him perish um, I think, of course, we're going to support him. So basically, Lu Biao has declared war on him and he's marching to kill him on the orders of my brother. Um, and we obviously want to do everything we can to undermine our brother. So we will declare war on him. Uh, we'll follow. This is kind of historically what happened, but I want to do this anyway because I want to have a fat coalition of uh, Mi Sao Sao and uh, Sun Jin. So it should just be like sick. We could actually befriend Lu Biao, which would not be bad. But yeah, I think following the story will be great. Um, it'll make me and him really friendly. And I think now we are at war with like everyone to the south. Like everyone here, we are now fighting. Um, which is going to be crazy. But we can march and take his capital. If he hasn't got anything here, this will be an easy settlement to take. Like hopefully he's just very busy in the south here. Um, and we can take advantage of that. Um, so we need our army desperately needs to replenish though, like ASAP. And then we'll probably start moving down south. Yeah, for sure. Um, does the Dong want to have peace out of interest? Now that we've got a little bit bigger. No, there's no way. Oh, we could give him the lumber camp. He just wants the lumber camp, right? Yeah, he just wants that. And he'd give me some... No, I'd give him some money? No, yeah, okay. He'd give me a bit of money for that. Hmm. Mm, do we want that, though? I mean, no. He. We've just killed his army. He should be a bit busy. With other stuff for a while. Um, and he wants peace. Now he wants me to come his vassal. <laughs> no, definitely not. That would be a fun strategy though. Is to bend the knee to, knee to Dong like right away. And, and to see what happens. So Lu Biao has gone back to his capital with his full stack. That's pretty scary. And apparently he can make his way to the settlement. I don't think he can if he's not in force marched. Because he is currently in force march. That's giving him, what, 50% extra campaign movement range. So I don't believe he'll be able to make his way to me in time. 
Um, but what will... And he can't also... Yeah, even if he's in Force March, he can't initiate this battle. However, I think to be on the safe side, I'm going to recruit some Spearmen. Uh, probably recruit a new character as well. I can spend some legitimacy uh, to, to recruit him. Uh, that does take me away from my, my first limit, but I think that's fine. I'd rather have him inside the settlement um, just in case. And it's, it's kind of good to have another army up and, up and you know, chilling um, as quickly as possible. That, like, having a character plus the garrison as well. The garrison's pretty decent, so let's see um, what he does this turn. And then uh, then Yon Shu should be turning up fairly soon as well. Oh, nice, a non-aggression. I thought we already had a non-aggression, but I guess not. Uh, I mean, realistically, I just need to find someone to goddamn trade with right now. Here we go. Wait, he can't attack me, right? No, wait, he can't, how could he attack me? How can he attack me? He doesn't have... He was in Force March, wasn't he? Um, I mean, I guess we'll fight this, no matter... We'll fight this anyway, just to try and kill as much as we can, because Yon Shu is on the way. But I'll fight this off-camera, unless it gets really interesting. Um, yeah, I'll try and do as much damage to this army as possible. So he did manage to go ahead and secure the settlement, but we did some serious damage to him. He lost two-thirds of his army during that battle, so I will take that... Uh, he's going to secure the settlement as well, which is perfect for us, because Yon Shu is just round the corner, literally right down the road. Oh, and the Dong has been killed. Nice. That's awesome for us. Um, sorry, I don't know why I skipped that. I've seen that so many times that I've just it's natural for me to skip it now. Um, but basically, it's just basically meaning that the Dong has now been killed, which is good for us because now maybe we can befriend uh, befriend him, uh, Dong Ming, his, uh, his brother or his heir. Would he be more likely to have peace now? 800 gold and become his battle. No. <laughs> it's like almost like, oh, 800 gold. Yes, and then, oh, no, we won't do that. Um, and we can't reach him this turn. Oh, that's a shame. That's a real shame. We also don't get any replenishment. He's going to get his replenishment. But we should be able to stop him from recruiting all of these units. And the garrison should be... Yeah, the garrison's still replenishing. I still don't know how he managed to attack me from there. I guess the AI does just cheat, but still. Ooh, that's good. That's really good, because now we can stick our cavalry into Wedge. Yeah, Wedge formation. Perfect. We'll go ahead and equip that on him. Nothing too valuable there. We've got the, the axe on that guy. Anything useful here we could stick on? Um, both of these will be good later on in the game. Um, and sure, just have some satisfaction, a satisfaction boost as well. Okay, well, we'll be moving on that, and hopefully we'll be able to corner him and kill him. Because uh, that's ideally what we want to try and do. Um, we do kind of need a bit more food as well. But for now, the war continues against Lu Biao. Lu Biao. Okay, so Lu Biao has decided to sally out and meet me. And honestly, I'm pretty happy with this. Obviously, he gets the garrison, which is looking okay. Very depleted, but okay nonetheless. Um, it's mainly just his heroes I'm worried about. Like, I remember this guy. I think this guy is one of the... Uh, the best archers in China, I think. Um, so he's going to be very scary. Uh, I don't know too much about this guy, if he's important. And obviously, Lu Biao himself. But I think we'll just... Hopefully, our army will beat his army. So let's dive into this battle. Um, and I mean, capturing, killing him early on would be amazing. Because uh, heroes can just die in Total War Free Kingdom. So we could kill him. He could obviously escape, but... He, I think he is going to be, his HP is going to be a little bit lower because of the previous battle. So I'm hoping we can just come in, kill him, cut the head off the snake, let a weak person take over him, and we can just take all that territory. Yeah, look at this guy. He's like insane. I also wouldn't mind taking this guy on my side because that would be amazing if we could secure him. Um, and they attacked me as well. So we get a defensive uh, high ground. If we wanted to fall back, we could definitely take this hill back here. Which is, I think is exactly what I'm going to do. Okay, the battle is kicking off. They're going to be charging forward their shock cavalry. Which is something I don't really want to dive into. But I think it's something I'm going to have to commit to. Um, and just engage these guys with my horses. The archers are opening up as well. We should make quick work of their units. Uh, we also have some of our own cavalry as well. Which I might send off to try and hit their missiles. Um, and just advance forward. Uh, try and keep our spearmen stationary. We'll pop our missile block off from these guys as well. And then we're going to have to, you know, advance forward our infantry line to meet theirs. Which should be, you know, fine. You guys should be running as well. Oh god, I didn't get the charge off. That's really not too good for me. Yeah, their, their shock cavalry is going to hurt. I don't really know why I'm bringing over Yon Shu either. Oh my god, why is this general routing? The battle's only just started and he's routing. What an absolute coward. Why is he breaking? I actually have no idea why he's breaking. I guess maybe they did some abilities to him or something? Well, 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 that's uh, that's not good, is it? 
Okay, this is a very, very close battle right now, and I'm losing this left flank. I managed to win the right flank quite handedly, and the infantry lines are looking pretty good. But besides that, they are pushing on me very aggressively. Um, and I don't really want to try and fight their generals, but maybe I'm just going to have to try and bomb rush one of their generals with my, uh, with my generals. Try and break in here um, and just cause a big rout or something. Our cavalry is causing mayhem in their archer line as well, which is perfect. Uh, but yeah, as you can see... Uh, their cavalry is doing a good job against mine, and there's only so much I can really do. You know, as long as I can win the infantry fight, then maybe I can focus elsewhere. But for now, my main focus is on just winning uh, this engagement right here, and maybe trying to kill the general. The battle's on a knife edge right now. You can see down in the balance of power bar that is extremely even. They've also got some reinforcements. Oh, these aren't reinforcements. These guys just came back from routing. Uh, they kind of, I guess, formed up before coming back into battle. Lu Biao is very close to going down. Um, I don't think I want to do this. No, surely not. Let's decline that. Um, the archers are coming. Oh, the archers need to hold fire as well. Axemen came back from routing. Let's throw them in. Something I've noticed quite a lot in Free Kingdoms uh, when it comes to battles is that units come back from routing a lot. Uh, it's not something I'm personally a big fan of. Um, I'd rather kind of more of decisive actions rather than anything else. But hey, it is what it is. Um, you know, overall the battles do play out better than, uh, say, other Total War games that I don't necessarily enjoy. So I'm, I'm happy, you know, I'm happy. And have we killed him yet? Yeah, I think we have just killed him. Nice. Obviously, we have to now deal with this guy. Um, you can really see, though, in this, just how quickly heroes melt. Heroes absolutely melt when they are surrounded by heavy infantry, or just infantry in general. If they get mobbed, they die. And if there's no support for them, they, they get taken down very quickly. And I think we might just about claim this one. It'll be a close battle, and we'll take casualties, but I think we're going to come out on top. Look at this, Lubiao is going berserk now. He's got some huge bonuses uh, because of a rival. I think because I just killed the, uh, the really good archer guy, I can't remember his name, uh, I've now become a rival with Lubiao. That's really cool that they kind of work that dynamically as well. So now he's going to be getting some big old bonuses and, yeah, fallen friend because I guess we must have killed him in that engagement. I mean, it would have been nice to try and capture him, but hey, I'm not complaining. Um, and the battle is still pretty even, in all honesty. It could really go either way. Uh, he also gained a ton of HP back there as well. Okay, let's uh, let's not get too ahead of ourselves. The battle is still very much going on. Beautiful. The battle has been won, but I really want to try and capture Lubiao because I don't want him really to escape. So let's just send our cavalry after him and see if we can get him before he does flee. Um, you can see... There we go. Yeah, nice. Did we, did we kill him? We He fell, so we'll have to find out who died after this battle because I think there's a chance that... You kill them, there's a chance that you capture them, and then there's a chance that they can escape and are just wounded. Um, I've seen a lot of situations where, like, big boys at the beginning of a Free Kingdoms period are just gone. Like, I was playing a head-to-head -head with Lionheart uh, when we were just messing around before we did our proper one, and uh, Liu Bei actually ended up dying on, like, turn four, and Guan Yu took over the mantle of the faction. Unfortunately, we didn't manage to capture any of them. We stole a bunch of his accolades. Oh, okay, so here we go. We've actually managed to, uh, you know, I guess we captured this guy. We could ca we could execute him. I mean, or well, we could release him. We don't really need money. I'm going to execute him because he's a good commander, right? He's, he's level three. I don't want him messing around with me, so... Let's do that. And then I think we will just ransom the rest of the prisoners. Oh, and now we can move in and finish them off. Perfect. That's great. That is really good for us. We're going we're gonna to like hopefully capture a few more of his generals and just weaken his forces massively. Who was that as well? That was someone I haven't met before, right? That's good though. So let's move in now. We should just be able to auto resolve this. Has Lubiao managed to escape? I guess he has. I really want to capture this guy and bend him to my will. Um, because he's like a legendary character, so that would be, just be perfect. Um, let's just delegate this one. I was going to demand surrender and just take it, but I think it's fine. I don't want this army escaping. We managed to kill the guy. Wait, didn't we execute this guy last turn? I actually can't remember. <laughs> but I mean, either way, we managed to take back our mine. We're going to take our replenishment and then march on the city. How The city is pretty well defended, but I mean, it's going to take him a while to really build up his, his force and stuff, so... Now that there's a civil war going on for power, do you want to make peace with me? Still no. He wants a lot of my money as well, yeah, because I've got a lot of cash right now chilling up, which I might use to recruit another army. Um, yeah, I might use that to recruit another army. Up here in the north, we'll obviously repair this as well. So who would we want to command it? Um, yeah, like a, a good, like, this. these guys are good at killing... 
Yeah, these guys are really good at killing groups of infantry, and his instinct is actually really high. Is that the same for everyone? Yeah, I guess everyone has pretty high stats. Oh, we could just hire from within, honestly, as well. That's not a, a bad plan either. Um, yeah, we could just uh, hire our... She's our, sis, our wife, I think. Chem wrong? I mean, it's pretty good. Great, let's do it. Let's get another commander on the field of battle. Um, we'll stick him in the capital. And we'll just recruit a couple more men with him. Hopefully we'll have some good stuff as well. Yeah, he's pretty decent. He's got like a whole good of stats. He's bright as well, which is awesome. Humble, which boosts up his satisfaction. Yeah, he's going to be a really happy boy the entire time. Especially if we give him some other bonuses as well. Yeah, he's going to be a, a useful boy as well to use for sure. Uh, let's boost up his resolve, sure. Because resolve gives pub yeah, general health, which is good. Oh, nice. Well, that's a good setup so far. I think I'm going to let my army replenish, maybe build up a couple more troops in this army, and then head down to the capital, or to Lu Biao's capital before he can reinforce it. Reform time as well. So I think what we'll do now is we'll pick up uh, probably just some green tech. We don't have any of this, and the extra pop growth every turn is just, yeah, it's too good not to get, because the higher population growth you have, the more replenishment you get in the city. So it's just always a useful thing to try and build up. Oh god, the boy himself. Lu Bu has come. This is awful. This is really, really bad. I mean, luckily we do have an army garrisoned inside the settlement. Plus, the, you know, it is going to be walled as well, I believe. Le level 1 towers. But it is, a, it is a small city, so it will have um, defenses, I think, and a wall. So I think it does anyway. Maybe it doesn't. Does it tell me uh, if I get this? Does it give me? Does it tell me if I have a wall? Yeah, so the settlement doesn't even have walls. Oh, God. That is not good. I didn't think that was the case. Will we be able to defeat him? I mean, I think we'll be able to kill his army with the help of the towers. It's just killing him. He's level 7 at the start of the game. That's absolutely insane. Uh, can we get peace? Like, how... Like, I don't mind fighting the battle, but... Yeah, that's just not going to happen, though, is it, my dude? Not at all. Um, I guess we're fighting Lu Bu, then. Maybe we can capture him. I also, also have to worry about Lu Biao as well in the south, which is also not so good. Um, yeah, god damn it. That's, uh, that's crazy. And also, I'm really surprised that Sal's... Like, I wonder what Sal Sal's up to, because he hasn't taken out He Yi yet, so what's he doing? You can obviously see um, our friend down here in the south as well, who we could coalition with at any time. Let me know in the comments what you guys think. Should we coalition with him right away? Uh, look how much he loves me as well. We are the best of friends. Uh, as he does say, we're, we're, we're best friends, right? Um, yeah, best friends right there. That's awesome. Um, so yeah, cool. Well, there we go, guys. That's where I'm going to end the episode. Let me know if you think we should confederate early on or we should bide our time a little bit more. Um, next episode, we'll have a big old fight with Lu Bu. I don't like saying that. I really don't. But I don't think I can send this army back to help. I mean, we could. We could send this army back and, and aid the defenses. We could just switch these guys over, leave him defending the, uh, the mine, and then this army comes back to defend this, because if he attacks, this army will be able to repel him easily. Would, okay, I just don't think this army will be able to win it. Yeah. So maybe what I'll do is I'll switch these guys around and see what Lubu gets up to. Probably just bypasses and takes the lumber camp, or just heads elsewhere, and then we need to build up this army maybe a little bit more as well to to help repel him but yeah so far this has been a hard campaign you know i can't really push on anyone right now because i'm constantly fighting from all these different directions but i think if we repel Lu Bu, beat Lu Biao uh, one more time then we'll be in a, a, a healthy situation we just need to take this settlement if we take this settlement then i think everything else will just fall into place and everyone else will crumble um so let's Let's take a look for that. Yeah, we'll see what we can do. It'd also be nice as well if Sinjin actually did some stuff against him. But it seems like he's busy just taking hand territory everywhere. Yeah, it seems like he's just busy taking hand territory. Which isn't the worst thing in the world. But yeah, for so now, we'll just continue on and see what we can get done. But yeah, if you guys enjoyed, be sure to drop a like and a comment down below. And I'll see you guys in the next one.